Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 22, Part 2 The princess sat upon her throne, unchanged and ever beautiful, her ancient eyes seeming kind, caring, and wise. But he knew better. He knew from Luna's memories that everything the public saw about Celestia was an act. A lie. Ponies were just game pieces to her. She was playing a board game called Equestria, trying to get a high score for public approval. He felt weak and defenseless, with his two most potent magic sealed away. The fact that he was not already arrested or incinerated meant that the changeling artifacts were doing their jobs. He was thankful the potion that he had acquired from the black market was working as advertised. Despite everything, he felt no fear. He knew that for the next few hours, he would be incapable of such. The goddess looked at him and spoke. Noble guide, you may approach. The Solar Throne is ready to hear your petition. Her voice clear and pure, carrying the warmth and confidence that had guided ponies for millennia. He moved forward and bowed, performing all the required court etiquette. They both had a script, and he stuck to his. He began, launching into his prepared pitch to construct a new settlement to house ponies of Manhattan, and after to maintain it for future need. It was not too long before he felt it, a powerful but restrained force. Inside the gem, it looks like a golden light illuminated a narrow arc, but he kept on with his speech because it was the only option that he had. <sighs> the nightmare's trick will either work, or I will die, here and now. He thought, marveling how calm the drug made him. Celestia probed deeper and deeper, yet she still played her part in the conversation, and not once did her horn light. Within the gem, the searching light had become tendrils, reaching around, picking up sections of the fake mind, before carefully returning them where they had come from. It gave him the impression of an octopus reading books in a library. Celestia's smile seemed to become warmer, more eager, as the mental probe retreated. She was giving all the signs that she would agree. Now all that needed to be done was going through the rest of the performance. A few donations of spell gems to the Canterlot Times had been all that was needed to get full access to all of their secret files. He had given them nothing truly forbidden, just a few things the law was less than happy about being available. Noble didn't really know what they would do with him, nor did he really care. Now he had more than enough potential blackmail material should the need arise. Folders of information spread upon his desk. He had so many choices, although he's always known that Canterlot had a darker side. I'd be doing Celestia a favor if I killed half of them, he thought. This was going to be hard. All of his first choices were too caught up in useful schemes. He didn't really want to interfere with any of them. It would disrupt Celestia's rule far more by being allowed to continue unhindered. Maybe I'm doing this all wrong, he thought, as he looked towards the files on the Elements of Harmony. But maybe if I can get some ponies doing what I need out of the goodness of their hearts... He smiled as plans began to form. The sound of approaching metal-clad hoof snapped Noble back to the present. Ever since he had implanted the gem, his mind has felt sharper, the memories more like reliving the moment instead of mere recollection. The hoof steps came closer. He would recognize Celestia's stately rhythm anywhere. He knew that she could move silently, but chose not to avoid panicking her little ponies. The white mare herself entered the meeting room her expression changing from the stock gentle smile to a genuinely pleased one. Good evening, noble guide. Her perfect voice greeted him. Noble rose and bowed respectfully. It was never hard to be respectful to an alicorn, he just had to not fight what his body was conditioned to do. Even in this friendly encounter, every action, every word, was just a dance of formality. The small talk, the tea, and even the polite commentary as they went through the paperwork laboriously, page by page. When he took over, he was definitely going to eliminate most of the paperwork. Three servings of tea, two plates of biscuits, and an hour lost to the evils of paperwork later, a trail of smoke entered the room, forming into a scroll with a flash of green flame. Celestia's gold magic caught it before it could even start to fall. Arriving like that, it must have been sent by Twilight's pet dragon, he thought. Celestia opened it and began to read. He couldn't see what was written, only that it was a very long letter and was in Cadence's decorative script. My apologies for the interruption. Celestia calmly spoke. Her magic intensified and the scroll popped out of existence. The princess's eyes glanced at the remaining paperwork. Lifting it all in her aura, she began to rapidly flick through it. Inside the gym, Noble could see Celestia's power rifling through the constructed memories. They reached in and made glowing copies of all the instances of him working on the documents currently before her. Somehow, she even made this frantic completion of paperwork seem calm and graceful. Pages flashed by, a few being pulled out where comments, corrections, or signatures were needed. 
she was just pretending to read it. You realized? She pulled the information from his mind and is now only acting. Yes, this seems all in order. She said, nodding firmly. You have my thanks, and the thanks of Equestria for the dedication that you have shown in this task. Thank you, Princess. He said, while bowing his head, accepting the compliment. Her aura pulled an expensive sheet of the finest paper from a drawer, and in gold she began writing. A few seconds later, a flash of her magic, and the paper now had a glowing mark upon it. She floated the paper to him before speaking in a formal tone. Noble Guide, we appoint you to oversee the well-being of the Manhattan Ponies. I am honored, Your Majesty, he said, bowing. She nodded, showing her too perfect smile. Now I am afraid that I have other matters that need addressing. Have a pleasant evening. She said, teleporting from the room in a flash of gold. Noble stared at what he now held. The paper bearing Celestia's seal was not quite a blank check, but it was close enough. If he was careful, he could do everything that he intended. He smiled as he left the room, a bounce in a step. Ah, oh, thank you, Cadence. He thought, with glee. Uda knew that his plans would actually be going quite well so far. But then again, they could crumble at any random moment of time. It just all depends on the when, where, and how. Anyways, let's get on to our spectacular donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Raiden, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Dospo, Delta Omega, RuneScythe9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Talwasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Skyochia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitten A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal'c Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Podrick Plunkhart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, and Shyfire. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.